In an industry where you usually have to decide upon going to an exploration company or a producing company, we're here with CEO of Element 79, James Torek, to discuss your company and how you're looking to combine both those elements. James, welcome. That's right. Thank you very much for having me. Well, and thank you for being here. We're live from PDAX. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. So the first thing I'd like to start off with here is that you're obviously an exploration company. We'll be talking about that very shortly as well. But you are also looking to go into producing in the near term and be a cash flow company as well. Can That's you right. explain that strategy and how you look to achieve that? Sure thing. Absolutely. Um, my background is banking. Uh, I come from commercial banking background as well as fund operation. And in that, when you're looking at financing companies, you take the perspective of what is the exit? right? Um, not to be uh, disparaging in any regard to the industry, we need exploration. Absolutely, we do. But it's very difficult to run a uh, business when you don't have cash flow. Yeah. So when our uh, kind of founding investors came through and said, you know, we're going to be building this company, I said, absolutely, I'll happily run this, except that we must have purview on direct line of cash flow within 24 months of our IPO. And we're very much on that pace right now. It's really exciting to see. Uh, we've actually even built the team around uh, ensuring that we have people that know how to operate. So build, operate, and optimize minds, not just exploratory and trying to pivot or uh, pretend. We're very much an exploration company that has a team of operators uh, that really are the, the backbone of where we're going. Yeah, well, what, before we jump into the project, why don't we go on that, actually? Can you explain sure. some of the, your team members and, and what type of experience they bring to your team? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, uh, our COO, Antonios Madagakis, or Tony, uh, Tony comes from a background of, you know, barrack trained. Um, he is uh, both a uh, civil engineer as well as a uh, project manager who has worked his entire career inside the, uh, the mining space, uh, building, optimizing and um, uh, operating mines uh, globally. And I mean, this is a gentleman who has worked on multi-billion dollar operations uh, yeah. for Freeport McMoran, for El Dorado. Um, you know, it, it Something like that is kind of like hooking up, a, or having a gentleman like that on our team, I should say, is like hooking up a, uh, a racehorse to an apple cart. And yeah. it's a fantastic feeling because we have properties that allow him to really shine. Um, also, our VP Exploration, uh, Kim Kirkland, uh, he is a perfect key in the sense that we have uh, both Nevada-based properties mm -hmm. as well as um, Peruvian-based properties. And he is a Nevada native that lives in Lamoille County, just outside of where our properties are um, in uh, really Elko and White Pine counties. Yeah. Uh, and he is a barrack trained, um, really a, a, you know, project manager, uh, type, um, exploratory geologist. Mm -hmm. This is a gentleman who, uh, also for the last 20 years has worked for global majors in South America, um, including really MMG, uh, the Las Bambas mine is, was his last major posting down in South America. So this is a gentleman that understands both, you know, the intricacies of what it takes to operate and be successful in Nevada. Yeah. Just as much as it does in Peru. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and once you get these gentlemen and you get the, these team members, obviously then you need to have the projects for them to be working on. So why don't we jump into that as well? Of course. And can you speak about uh, your goal of becoming uh, your, that near-term cash flow uh, strategy with your Lucero mine in Peru? Sure thing. Um, now, from our IPO, if we had just started with our kind of starter kit Dale property, uh, which is Greenfield Exploratory, uh, very uh, rudimentary um, exploratory property, uh, and then jumped straight to cash flow, we would have basically sold the vast majority of the company right off the hop yeah. just to acquire those assets. So we spent uh, first uh, about a year on an M&A trajectory acquiring uh, large-scale blue sky exploratory type properties um, in British Columbia, as well as a whole portfolio of 16 properties in Nevada. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into the Maverick Springs property yeah. shortly, so I won't spend too much time on that just yet. But um, the whole point was to kind of uh, ensure that we had ounces in the books and a yeah. justifiable market cap. So as we built value inside the company, we then looked to acquire the, uh, I guess, previously producing uh, quick to cash flow type properties, which uh, really the specific one I'm speaking of is Lucero. And um, in, a, in the most, or I should say, the least dilutive fashion possible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, really excited about that and uh, exactly what we're going to be doing with that property shortly. Yeah. And obviously behind here, it shows the, the, uh, the property a little bit more. What are we seeing here? Sure. Well, in the past, uh, this property was actually um, discovered back in the 50s, and it was in production several times uh, over about 70 odd years. Mm -hmm. The last time it was in production was in 2004. And during that time, the vast majority of the production came out of this. Uh, yep. It's a high grade vein system. Uh, on average, it produced uh, about 40,000 tons a year at 150 tons a day uh, in terms of total ore extraction. 
but it, on average, it was producing about 19 grams per ton of uh, gold equivalency. So it really is gold and silver. Yeah. But uh, gold equivalency, 19 grams per ton. That just means that every shovel full that we pull out of the ground is that much more efficient. <laughs> Uh, you know, as opposed to some of these, uh, you know, half gram mass volume scale games. Yeah. Uh, now, what you're actually seeing here is also that um, while we're talking about veins, there are actually 74 veins at surface. Only seven have been exploited commercially. 14 sure. have actually been explored, but there's 74 veins at surface. It's really exciting in terms of the, uh, you know, the exploratory upside potential. And what you see up here in this region is uh, it's a high sulfidation target that we have uh, really strong um reason to believe just based on you know geology and assays and sampling and so on yeah. that that's going to uh likely turn into um uh, through drilling and exploration uh in that region a um uh, high oxidation uh area uh, where it's likely going to have a uh, something more exciting so we can play with the veins down here yeah but also explore this and turn that into a, a you know a mass scale uh bulk mine so pretty exciting. And, and again uh one looking for things that you know from the past have been producing, so looking for that near term, but then also having that expiration element to it, uh, to it as well. That this, whole region, this whole region is 26,000 acres, 10.8 10 thousand hectares of land at the top of the mountain. Uh, when we talk about getting to cash flow, when we look at you know reworking the veins here, giving ourselves a, a reasonable amount of running room yeah. uh, to start extracting ore, we don't have to worry about building in the first uh, couple of years, building our own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we can actually do is a toll milling process about 20 kilometers down the mountain. Um, there is the Buenaventura Orco Pampa mine, yeah. and that uh, mine is only running at about, or the mill is only running at about 60% uh, capacity. So they definitely have capacity for us, and it's obviously the next logical, you know, move to move the ore from here yeah. down and start generating cash flow in the short run. And once we stabilize those cash flows, we can look at building our own infrastructure two to three years into the future. Yeah, very exciting. And, and yeah, more exciting as well as we're, all, we're only talking about one area right now, Peru. That's, right. Uh, that's not, you're, you're in many different other places as well, or to have many different uh, targets. Can you speak about those that are in Nevada, and more specifically, your Maverick Springs, your flagship? Sure thing. Uh, you and I both know that in the grand scheme of things, if I'm in a you know presentation to investors or presentation to investment banks, raising capital, um, I only have let's say 15 minutes uh, to <laughs> tell a story and, and yeah. you know, tell them how, why, and how valuable, and this is why we need to grow together. Uh, so it's very difficult to speak about a portfolio of 20 properties. Yeah. Uh, the story inside Element 79, while we did bulk up, right now we're in the process of just focusing and trimming down. So you're gonna hear the story really focus on Lucero, generate cash flow so we can basically, in a non-dilutive fashion, uh, you know, generate our own income and fund our own exploration programs, right? That's very exciting. So we don't have to live and die by economic cycles. We don't have to live and die by, um, you know, the last hit, so to yeah. speak, right? Um, now, having said that, Maverick Springs represents a 3.71 million ounce gold equivalent re uh, inferred resource, okay? Oh. So that's uh, basically, it's a tier one silver deposit in a tier one jurisdiction. Uh, what I mean by that is that 3.71 million ounces of gold equivalency is actually 1.37 million ounces of gold inferred and 278 million ounces of silver. If you look at our neighbors, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit of silver sitting there. Um, you know, Reina Silver, they're doing great work. Uh, if you can see their uh, Medicine Springs program or what they're doing, massive uh, high-grade hits. Uh, Caliber Mining saw the, the value of acquiring, uh, I believe it was Fiore Gold, about a year ago. And uh, that pan mine is producing, uh, you know, a hub-and-spoke bottle from their Nicaraguan production. And, uh, you know, now they've got a foothold at a tier one jurisdiction. That's only 18 kilometers away. Rain is 20 kilometers away. And Kinross's Bald Mountain Mine, uh, which is in active production today, uh, is only 28 kilometers away. And we're perfectly triangulated between. So geologically speaking, it's a high quality hit. We're pretty You're excited. You're in elephant territory. To, yeah, we're in elephant territory. We're, we're pretty excited about being able to, uh, extend the resource on site. Yeah. Uh, improve the metallurgy, improve the strip ratio, uh, from our, the, all the historical data start doing some work to improve things to make the economics uh, of the project make that much more sense. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate all that information. And you mentioned this a couple of times about uh, you want to take it to near term so that you don't have to keep going back to, say, financings or whatever, be or, or live by the, the drill. But for the, <laughs> while you are going into that uh, near term cash flow and while you're on that path, how are you currently financially structured? What is the current financial health of your company? Sure, absolutely. Uh, what we've done, we've done a bit of a, a bit of a different model. We financed ourselves, um, number one, in a couple of small capital raises pre-IPO, yeah. but uh, more specifically, we've uh, been using an equity line uh, from a group called Crescita Capital. 
Okay. And uh, we've drawn down about 5.6 million from that equity line to date. And uh, we kind of get it in tranches. Um, yeah. So it's not like we, we, you know, draw down a million or $3 million at a time. And also, I guess, um, you know, as a pivot point or a different way of doing things, we don't currently have a large war chest of cash on the balance sheet, but we still have roughly $4.5 million, $4.4 million of uh, equity that we can draw down on that. Gotcha. Uh, so they are a cornerstone investor. They're big term believers in what we're doing, uh, long term uh, perspective. And they're very flexible in terms of helping us out in terms of growth. So it's been a, a great relationship and uh, it's been very helpful in terms of helping us grow uh, very that good. way. Now, having said that, I don't want to say that that precludes doing other capital raises. So small, uh, you know, we might be looking at doing a, a small equity raise and or convertible debt raise in the, in the near term future here this year, really to use those uh, funds primarily to get the production in Peru up and running. Gotcha. So uh, kindly stay tuned and you'll see some more uh, exciting news about that coming shortly. Hey, well, excited to hear. And uh, speaking about exciting news, my last question for you, for investors who are currently invested for, with you, or maybe just hearing about you for the first time, what are the in, uh, exciting elements coming up for your company that they should be excited for and looking out for? Sure. Well, uh, like I said, uh, the uh, portfolio really is far too large for us to uh, manage uh, in terms of, you know, focus story, get to cash flow, expand the resource of Maverick Springs. Everything else really is non-core. And um, it does re still represent a lot of value. We have a couple properties under LOI for sale. There's five properties uh, under our two separate LOIs to two different companies in uh, Nevada. And uh, that will help us, again, increase our focus, but also bring some shares and pot uh, potentially some cash to the table. Uh, we have several other groups in our data rooms right now that are looking at, uh, ad again, additional uh, acquisitions for their firms, but that can bring in some non-dilutional cash uh, to the balance sheet and help fund our operations. Um, in addition to that, maybe a couple uh, additions to the team. You'll see some uh, okay. some growth that way as well. So it, it's going to be a pretty exciting year as we plow down the path over the next 12 months to get to cash flow from Lucero. And also you'll see some uh, newsreel come out of Maverick Springs in terms of the, uh, you know, just reworking yeah. the historical data and uh, also maybe some new drilling. So. Oh, well, absolutely. Well, hey, I appreciate that so much, James. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, you, and if people are looking to figure out uh, where they can hear more about your information, just really quickly, your website and how they can reach out. Sure thing. Thank you. Our website is www.element79.gold. Our ticker in Canada is ELEM in the US. Uh, on the OTC, it is verified pink as ELMGF. And we are also cross-listed on Frankfurt as 7YS. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, James. I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me and have a great show. Thank you.